Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're gonna do a beautiful rushing river, maybe kind of like a little waterfall in the background and a lot of mountains and trees. It'll be a lot of fun. Of course, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. Let's get started. We'll start off today here with a two inch brush and a little bit of blue, black, and white all mixed together, maybe a touch of brown. Not too much of the brown, okay. This is gonna be a slightly different painting. We're gonna do no sky, no sky at all. I'll give you a little background on this painting as we go. For now, let me just sort of start laying down some color. There, okay. This is just a little bit of a mountain in the background, so, you know, make sure you vary the colors. You want it to be blue, though, so that it looks far away. Next, I'll mix together a beautiful soft green color on a filbert brush and right up here. I am very simply going to drop in some distant trees or grass. Didn't make any difference what it is growing on the mountain. Maybe down here. Yeah, right down here. We definitely need some, some green. Now I'm sticking these green areas in first and then I'm gonna come back and put in the darker rocks in and around them. And then after all that's done, then we'll come back and we'll add our extremely distant waterfall, which will basically just be a little white line. There. I don't want this background standing out too much, so kind of be careful. There. Now I'm gonna just place in very quickly a little waterfall here, and I've just, see, I just use a little bit of paint, not a lot, and it's a, well, it's just sort of this blue color right here, uh, although it looks white on the canvas. There. You can highlight, but I don't recommend highlighting very much. And I'm not gonna highlight with pure white. I'm actually gonna highlight with this softer shade of blue. All right, <laughs> there we go. You can always rub the highlight away if you get too much. So, you know, here and there, just help it to stand out a bit. Don't paint the whole waterfall. Just paint little bits. This is so far away. Just a line, that's all it is. Don't go any more detailed than a line. There we go, good, okay. Now, if you want to paint some snow, you can kind of do that with this brush as well. Just sort of work that snow up. If this looks like water, then I might erase it. I want to just see what it looks like. You've got to experiment, you know. Now with a beautiful soft green color, I'm going to go ahead and just underpaint a lot of this area back here. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get a lot of these, at least the middle ground areas blocked in. I'm gonna change to some brown, put some brown in. Watch this change to some yellow, throw some yellow in, right? Isn't that cool? Gotta love doing stuff like that. Create variation, don't just let it go flat one color. That's kind of not so much fun. Have a little more fun with it than that. Pure green. There, you can do that. <laughs> okay, now I think it's about time that I tell you where this painting came from, or this idea. This is a real place in Canada, and we actually just got back from a vacation for in Canada for the last 10 days we were there. So I'm really excited to do stuff like this now. I'm all inspired and so it's a lot of fun. There, so this is a real place. We walked into this area and it is just so natural and so amazing. Oh, so this is a picture. It was kind of a cloudy day, so I'm gonna put some more light in it than there was. And maybe in just a few minutes later on in the video, I'll sort of share some of our vacation photos with you so you can kind of almost get to experience the trip with us. It was a lot of fun, so we'll do that later. Now I'm just gonna spend a few minutes up here dropping in our little evergreens. These are just background evergreens, so it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference how you do them. There, just make sure you, you have fun and you're loose. Maybe I'll change to the little detail round. I, I want more, I want them more spindly because honestly the trees that we saw were very, very skinny. In fact, they were so skinny that it was kind of different, you know? You could really notice it. So I want to make sure that I represent that here in this painting. <laughs> there we go. So I'll spend just a few minutes with this. It won't take much longer. Even though I'm using this brush, the little detail round. Now I'm going to go ahead and carefully just drop on a bit of highlight up here. There. Now I'm going to do this very soft so that I don't get too many, well, too many weird edges, you know. I don't want it to get too fuzzy and blurry. Okay, I need more rapid area. There we go. Very, very rapid. In fact, most of this is gonna be covered up with this water. 
very white today. All right, there we go. Allow it to get darker as it mixes there to create a little bit of a shelf and then see that it can kind of work its way down. It's like a, it keeps dropping and then we'll flatten it out down here. Next, I'll take just a bit of black on a filbert brush and drop in some rocks up here. You can see I used a lighter, a lighter mix up there to create the, well, the more distant rocks. Besides, those are kind of in the mist, so there you go. That's another reason why they might be lighter. There, place that little rock. We can do some more white water around these rocks. I just want to make sure I get them all in first. Maybe there's one right over here, something like that. Good. <laughs> You can put them in wherever. However, I'm kind of sticking to, kind of sticking to the actual scene because this is a real place. It's so pretty. In fact, right now I'd love to go ahead and stop and show you just a few vacation photos, so you almost kind of get to experience a little bit of what we had for the last ten days. So, I'll show you just a few. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and just drop on a bit of highlight here to some of these evergreens. Now there's really no light source, so I'm going to have to make up my own. And just for fun, I'm going to go with the light coming across this way, and I'm also going to make it a whole lot brighter than it was. Because, you know, the painting just needs it, so you can do that and it doesn't make any difference. You don't have to follow photos or anything exactly. You can sort of put your own spin on things, which is good. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Repeat this process over and over and over again until you have a, a beautiful, beautiful little forest back here. I won't go on to any of the big trees. I'll save those. We'll do those in the next step. Now I'm going to go ahead and just drop on a few very quick leaves. <laughs> I mean, little evergreen needles here to these trees because the reason I'm doing quick is because I know I'm going to do a lot of larger ones in front of these so what's the point of wasting time right there I can as you can see I threw in just a couple of branch or <laughs> tree trunks and that helps to kind of define each tree maybe they'll be covered up and I threw some in the background here we should probably soften those just by well since we have this brush going this is It'll work. We'll just soften those back. See that? Just tap them to soften them so they fit inside the tree instead of outside. Good. All right. Now, I don't want to go so bright with these that they stand way out because I still got to put some more over top. These are not really the feature of the painting. This is a little background material. If you get too much, and I may even do this, we'll see. I might take a paper towel and just blot it like that to suck up any of the extra oil that I can get off before we go on to the larger trees. We'll see. I'll let you know. It just depends on how slippery it gets here, how much highlight I put on. Now I want to go ahead and just drop in several trees up here. And what this will do is really make it look like and feel like we're in a forest. And that, you know, we have to look around the trees to see the waterfall. And I love that look. I think that is just amazing. Helps to make it look so natural, right? Because in the forest, it, it's not usually just open like this, you know, without the trees. It would, you just see the waterfall perfectly. Instead, I'm putting a whole bunch of trees. So you have to look around the trees. I think it'll give you a really, really interesting effect. So, <laughs> plus they were there. All right. Now with our filbert brush, I'm just going to repeat the same process that I used to highlight. This time, just with a dark. And I'm going to I'm going to do this to really make sure. We get some beautiful contrast when we highlight. I don't know how much we want to highlight. We'll kind of see. Maybe, I mean, I do want some highlight filtering through the trees because it adds a little more interest. So we'll kind of just figure it out as we go along. There. And you'll notice that we didn't use a perfectly dark black in the background so that when we, when we have this extremely dark color, it's mostly black, a little green, a little blue. 
See how it stands out? And you can see it almost like a silhouette there, especially over this area. Well, that's good stuff. <laughs> All right, too much fun. Now I'm gonna just put on a little bit of highlight here to these tree trunks. I don't want a whole lot. And as you can see, I decided to make that one a little brighter. And maybe we'll do a little bit of spot highlighting to some of these, but not, not as much. But each one, I've decided we're not gonna have these as like a silhouette. Each one is gonna get a bit of highlight so that it stands out. So you can see it as it works its way down, even in this dark area. There, I'm brightening up this whole scene a bit. And I like that, I think it'll just, I don't know, I think it'll work just a little better if it's a little bit brighter. But it's up to you, you know, when you do your version of it, maybe you want it to be a little bit softer, you can do that. That's okay, so just whatever, whatever you wanna do. There we go. Okay, maybe just a little more light, watch this. A little bit of spot highlighting here. Oh, that's pretty. Now I'm gonna use a fan brush to tap on some beautiful little moss areas because this is very close, I'm not just dabbing at it. Instead, I am rotating my little fingers and, you know, just making it a little more broken up. There you go, okay, cool. Sure, some of that moss can kind of work up the tree. We can do that, doesn't matter. And maybe on this side, here you go. Kind of break up that hard edge. You can go with some lights and some darks. There, love it. And should you want to place a tree over the moss, you know, if you eat it up by accident, just take the, see how I did that? Just take the brown and repaint the highlight. That's all you need to do. There. And then down over here, maybe. Back here. A little bit of moss on the ground. Very wet back here. From all that water from the waterfall. Plus it probably rains a lot too. Now one of the last things I'm gonna do up here is with the detail round brush drop in a little bit of highlight here and there to these large trees. Not gonna need a whole lot. I'm mostly focusing on the tip of each little branch. Good, see that? So the light's kind of filtering through and the light, you know, it's, you know, who knows where it might get blocked because of the surrounding trees. So feel free to, to put a lot of variety in this. Don't feel like you're stuck highlighting the whole tree even though it's on the right, you know? You can leave limbs in shadow, even on the right-hand side. That's okay. Cool. Maybe, oh, just a touch up here, but I don't wanna lose that contrast. Good, we'll use that same idea, working all across these trees, getting darker as we go toward the left. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. Thanks for watching.